uh, good morning. Uh, so I welcome you all for this uh, course MWE6025 Vehicle Crash Worthiness. See, uh, the term vehicle crash worthiness, when you see, that's very important uh, um, term nowadays uh, in automotive industries. And this crash worthiness term, maybe for uh, last two, three decades, uh, become very important uh, in automotive manufacturers, uh, vehicle manufacturers. So if you look at uh, this crash worthiness as measured in standardized crash test, is currently ranked as one of the important metric like uh, uh, if you look at market value or the demand of any um, vehicle especially the road vehicles you see that uh, what is comes in our mind first uh, what is the fuel economy so what is the styling what is an aerodynamics that's going into a vehicle so what is that uh, performance and uh, uh, handling ride aspects of the vehicle you have finished vehicle dynamics course so you know what are the requirement of vehicle uh, uh, design? Uh, vehicle dynamics is the key when you say the course vehicle crash worthiness is just a part of this vehicle dynamics. And uh, as the no, uh, name dynamics says, uh, vehicle crash worthiness involve dynamic study in particular, especially uh, vehicle safety is given a primary importance. So I buy vehicle, but I would always prefer I am very safe by while driving my vehicle. So when I say that uh, the vehicle um, ranked based on an important metric called the crash worthiness of the vehicle. So that's the reason why um, there are many researchers and test engineers, uh, the automobile uh, um, uh, manufacturers have uh, been more focusing on uh, this vehicle crash worthiness study, right? So how do you define this vehicle crash worthiness? So this vehicle crash worthiness can be looked at, uh, if you look at an off, uh, it's basically comes from aerospace industry in the beginning of the definition. So what does it uh, say is it's a measure of the ability of a structure and any of its components to protect the occupants in survivable crashes. So the crash takes place which is uh, unexpected, unfortunate event in case of uh, malpractice uh, or uh, malfunctioning, sorry, malfunctioning of uh, the vehicle uh, uh, system, this happens. <clears throat> so um, the crash routineness is basically defined as how it can be designed to protect the occupants present inside the vehicle uh, during uh, survivable crashes is what is that uh, basic definition that you see that comes from the aerospace industry at the beginning. As far as an automotive uh, sector is concerned, the crash worthiness, there are many definitions that you see crash worthiness. I'm just saying few and all are referring to the same by different uh, um, statements, right? So you can also say this crash worthiness means a measure of vehicle structural ability to plastically deform. So you see that uh, the deformation uh, is nothing but uh, um, uh, it can be elastic deformation or plastic deformation. So when you say crash worthiness, what is to come in your mind is the vehicle structural ability to plastically deform and yet maintain a sufficient survival space for its occupant occupants in the crashes involving reasonable deceleration loads. So when you say crash, it is an impact. It is happening in uh, uh, all of a sudden in a fraction of uh, duration. So that is why it is a special vehicle dynamics part. In vehicle dynamics course, we have seen that its performance is handling all due course of driving of your vehicle with a steady motion. <clears throat> Whereas the crash worthiness is a particular uh, unavoidable uh, or required to be avoiding situation. Uh, to say the best to have crash worthiness vehicle is that uh, all happens in within a second within a second so the, when i say within a second that itself is a large duration because this entire scenario of crash of a vehicle would take place in few milliseconds <clears throat> and when that happens uh, when the driver or occupant cannot realize uh, what's happening with the vehicle so what's happened to them but still uh, after the completion of that few second events, so you see that uh, uh, the vehicle 
survival space is sufficient only protected by restraints and that protects the occupants and the vehicle is uh, undergoing some reasonable deceleration load so what will happen suddenly the vehicle would undergo a deceleration that's what is called um, crash pulse so crash pulse is what is something called vehicle deceleration time history so this crash pulse determination is what is the primary objective of designers of vehicle for a crash worthiness so if you say again uh, the statement of crash worthiness it refers to a measure of vehicle structural ability to plastically deform and yet to maintain a sufficient survival space for its occupants in crashes involving reasonable deceleration loads you can also say that uh, that would be achieved by means of restraint system and occupant packaging uh, of the vehicle that provides additional protection to uh, reduce the severe injuries and fatalities right so this is how you see that uh, uh, no in precisely to understand what is crash worthiness so when you say this vehicle crash worthiness what is that we are going to uh, uh, do uh, with the vehicle crash worthiness is there are many aspects as a learner of uh, uh, the course uh, and uh, you should uh, not always have some uh, idea about the course that's of course necessary uh, that is the kind of motivation that makes you to register for this course and and so on but at the end of this learning of this course you should be able to come out with a clear idea of uh, some of these aspects uh, of engineering aspects uh, that involve in vehicle crash worthiness so we may have uh, 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 we will have a clear understanding of or we will have some focused uh, uh, study on the crash pulse and kinematics during uh, collision of your vehicle so we have many aspects and there are fundamentals of uh, rigid body mechanics understanding and uh, how do you able to Uh, evaluate this uh, uh, crash worthiness so what are the different uh, aspect that go into uh, this like you say uh, you can also uh, say that the crash worthiness uh, study is nothing but vor study what do you mean by vor study vehicle occupant restraint analysis or vehicle vehicle occupant restraint study is what is called vor study that is what is your crash uh, uh, worthiness study so when i say vehicle you should say what are the design aspects in the vehicle a modern vehicle that go into uh, uh, ensure the crash worthiness of the vehicle what do you mean by crash worthiness of the vehicle vehicle crash happens but the occupant space the cavity of your vehicle is not disintegrated it is been protected so how can it be happening there should be some uh, uh, structural uh, design or the vehicle structural design is such that in the event of vehicle collision you would uh, see that the frontal portion in case of front collision or the side pillars of the vehicle uh, deformation or from the rear collision uh, uh, you see the rear bumpers of your vehicle all should undergo a plastic deformation that means uh, it has to absorb energy and dissipate energy so the vehicle energy management is what is an important aspect when you look at uh, this vor analysis as far as vehicle is concerned and knowledge of occupant dynamics <laughs> so there are reasonably lesser deceleration loads that we are saying the crash pulse kinematics is what is our <laughs> crux of the word of this crash worthiness study so when you look at the crash <coughs> pulse kinematics and that is what is an input to the occupants in the vehicle so that uh, what are the responses they uh, uh, of the occupants during such a uh, scenario is what is to be predicted <coughs> and the restraint the restraint uh, uh, study is uh, successful understanding of vehicle uh, dynamic aspect of uh, um, deformation uh, during collision and uh, occupant response uh, during collision because of uh, crash pulse um, or the deceleration time history that goes into uh, occupants as an input <coughs> the restraints that are developed in your vehicle generally uh, are classified as 
uh, passive safety systems in your vehicle are going to uh, protect your uh, protect the occupant uh, from uh, uh, severity of the crash when i say severity of the crashes there are uh, injury mechanisms and the toler tolerable injury levels of the occupant uh, that has to be ensured uh, uh, so that the fatality uh, the death during the um, uh, crash will not occur <laughs> so the restraint system studies so if we see this uh, our course vehicle crash routineness i would say that you should always say uh, this refers to vehicle occupant and restraint analysis right that is how you should say <laughs> and if you look at uh, as far as vehicle uh, crash routineness characterization is concerned every vehicle today uh, manufacturer they are supposed to undergo um uh, this crash test uh, program and uh, under various uh, uh, scenarios of crash so full frontal rigid barrier impact test full frontal deformable barrier impact test <clears throat> the impact test can be of offset impact test the uh, um, deformation uh, or the impact from the side so when you have a side impact on your vehicle how the occupants are protected <coughs> and there are some important uh, tests in the laboratories uh, these are also laboratory tests uh, where the sophisticated laboratory environment is required as a student you are learning you should understand how these uh, um, crash routineness laboratories uh, evaluation laboratories are equipped what are the different um, uh, instrumentation measurement systems that go into it all are the knowledge that you should be gaining uh, while going through this course <laughs> uh, and uh, um, so these are all uh, something that uh, you know uh, important highlights that you say uh, when you are learning this course and uh, you would of course uh, you'll have uh, some focused uh, study of application of finite element analysis if you look at um, the researchers uh, do uh, carry out this laboratory test, test full crash test called or component level crash test so every component in your vehicle is tested under a similar kind of load and to assess what is the kind of deformation that undergo especially to look at uh, quasi static uh, analysis so what would be its crash uh, during Uh, the static load is the first benchmark test of components are done so that you would be able to come out with an individual component uh, stiffness values and then it is going to be helpful for mathematically modeling your vehicle as lms it is called what is lms lump to mass spring model uh, um, there are popular models of that one of that yearly model is called kamal model and uh, we will look at that model where you would represent your vehicle crash scenario by means of lumped mass spring model <clears throat> right that's one of the uh, uh, um, analytical means uh, of looking at uh, uh, vehicle crash scenario and that would improvise that models are very quite uh, useful models for the researchers for the product development or the vehicle crash routineness development so of course the test uh, because of the government legislative requirement to be carried out and that uh, um, uh, responses that are predicted through uh, data acquisition system embedded with your test vehicle uh, crash test data so what are those crash test data that are available how are you going to filter the required data and to correlate that to the severity index of the <coughs> Uh, occupants all are uh, the basic uh, ba basic expectation of this course uh, learning right so we are going to have this all uh, study one after the other right and uh, 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 what is the advantage of this analytical models are uh, to uh, uh, avoid uh, uh, many number of testing of the same vehicle and to do a uh, um uh repetitive uh, product development process <clears throat> so that you can correlate uh, the real time uh, crash data with this mathematical model data so that is why uh, those are very popular but uh, still this lms model uh, lump to mass 
spring model uh, is quite uh, interesting and uh, acceptable model. Many researchers have worked on such models. You also have uh, an application of finite element analysis, and there are many softwares uh, that are accounting now explicit dynamic analysis <clears throat> because this involves uh, huge uh, 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 dynamic deformations, uh, large deformation problems. And in no time it's happened. So there are softwares like LS Dyna, Madimo, different softwares are there, Form Crash. So these are the softwares that are very quite useful uh, softwares where you can model your vehicle with an appropriate finite elements and then give an uh, realistic uh, crash pulse uh, input, uh, the vehicle input, uh, the required. Uh, initial velocity or the velocity during impact, um, any scenarios, uh, whatever the tests that are carried out uh, in the laboratory, uh, whether it is component level or full vehicle level, can be also carried out using virtually using finite element uh, methods. So that is what uh, you should also have to look at uh, how these uh, models are uh, done, right? <clears throat> And uh, there are uh, 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 fundamental um, strength of material uh, understanding of structural behavior during uh, your crash. So you see there are um, uh, mechanics uh, principle fundamentals uh, that going to correlate the bending torsion of your vehicle during uh, 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 torsional and bending effect of your vehicle during uh, collision. Especially if you look at uh, the collision means uh, that is our fundamental rigid body mechanics. So you can have uh, approach of uh, uh, the first hand assessment to do a particle approach of your vehicle. Uh, they collide and always when you have a particle ideology of vehicle means you do not much worry about um, uh, much worry about uh, the uh, geometry of the vehicle. Rather you look at the point uh, concentrated masses they interact. So they will always be uh, direct impacts. Uh, so you see uh, in our study of mechanics, uh, you define an important aspect called uh, coefficient of restitution. <laughs> that is being derived from application of linear impulse and momentum principle and uh, conservation of energy principle. And uh, that is the basic uh, uh, study of physics that uh, one has done uh, uh, in an engineering mechanics course. So that is exactly what we are going to look at also in uh, accounting uh, whole vehicle geometry as well as. So when you account the whole vehicle geometry during crash, there can also be an event called a rollover crash. So vehicle collide, the one vehicle get rolled over. So that's all because of uh, when the moment you consider the colliding vehicle along with the geometry, you would see that collision not necessarily central impact collision there will be non-centroidal collision. That means uh, there will be uh, not a force exchange alone. Um, the exchange of force would uh, make the vehicle to realize there are moments uh, present in the vehicle which are responsible. Uh, when I say forces and moments, these are all impulses, pulse moments, pulse forces that you say. So they would uh, create the vehicle to uh, undergo uh, severe crash uh, state, uh, rollover state. So these are all something as far as rigid body mechanics and its applications concerned, we will uh, touch upon in our uh, uh, course. And um, importantly, we have uh, further uh, uh, the study on uh, various um, um, instrumentation, especially if you see uh, there are um, the instruments uh, are uh, equipped with human dummies there are dummies that are used so they're right from the yearly dummy till the latest dummy which can completely resemble uh, an activity or uh, behavior of a human are to be present during the crash testing so these dummies are uh, just not only to understand the human uh, kinematics uh, during crash uh, pulse uh, input also it is to carry the necessary instrumentation uh, in order to uh, exactly predict this injury uh, index uh, uh, of the uh, severity index of the human. So we have uh, many injury mechanisms uh, related to various component of your vehicle that is interacting with your uh, with the occupants 
and the occupant severity correspondingly. So such kind of knowledge and, uh, and the limits of uh, injury allowable uh, also something that uh, we are going to uh, study in our course. So these are all uh, something and overview that uh, what is that uh, we are um, focusing uh, and uh, today meeting to start uh, our course uh, is what uh, just I uh, explained to you. And uh, if you look at uh, this all uh, crash routine has become very popular because of um, the um, US nation, United Nation. So you see the yearly 19th century, end of the 19th century, the yearly 18th century. Uh, if you look at the textbook that I would show you uh, in a while, uh, the first accident happened uh, to get an attention of uh, uh, researchers and government agencies in 1889. That's a statement with which uh, the textbook starts explaining the course. Right. Uh, so um, uh, why that attention is taken is because of to come out with the vehicle safety standards um, and uh, to execute those uh, vehicle safety standards. If I say that, in our course, we will frequently look at um, these two uh, aspect, uh, these two uh, things. So when you say I have learned this course, uh, um, the people uh, whom you interact after graduating would ask you, what is FMVSS? What is the NHTSA? So you should not uh, uh, have any worry of uh, 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 attaching you to those uh, standards and uh, administration uh, agencies to explain what are the roles, what is that uh, um, uh, knowledge that you get from them, all to be clear to you that is also as part of our learning course. So what is FMVSS? So FMVSS refer to Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard. What is NHTSA? That refer to National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. <clears throat> So these are uh, US norms. So similarly, you also have European norms. You also have BARC norms, our country own uh, uh, crash worthiness evaluation norms. Uh, so ARAI uh, uh, is a nodal agency that carry out uh, um, this crash worthiness evaluation of the vehicle. It's got a fantastic facilities uh, in the laboratory in ARAI. So we'll also go through those facilities during our course, right? So what is this? Uh, important thing is the accident, the first accident made the government agencies and the automakers to think on to develop a safety standards and the requirement of safety. And that is being mandated by this FMVSS. There are many standards. FMVSS 208, if you look at that is a standard for full frontal crash worthiness evaluation of a vehicle. So like that you have many series of standards and those standards are administered by the agency is what is called the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. <clears throat> so when you, when I say this all, you can also say refer to uh, um, the study of a vehicle crash within us uh, uh, fall in four groups. Like when I say uh, vehicle dynamics you have studied, we look at uh, starting from tire mechanics uh, and its uh, role for vehicle dynamics we have learned and then uh, longitudinal dynamics, lateral dynamics and vertical dynamics that you say. Uh, similarly, when I say this vehicle crash within us and that is being subdivided into four important aspects. What are those four important aspects? That is vehicle crash dynamics. So we are going to uh, look at uh, um, how the um, dynamics of vehicle crash is accounted. So that is a, of a class of uh, group of study. And then uh, we'll also understand the advent of computer technology, numerical methods, uh, especially finite element method and its application. And another uh, fold of uh, study and crash worthiness is occupant impact dynamics. So uh, how the occupant impact scenarios are there? So occupants are restrained, of course, by passive measures by seat belts and uh, and so on um, no but still uh, they are important uh, restraint measurements but uh, um, their dynamics uh, you'll have to see whether uh, only um, uh, is there any repeated impact of a human with the vehicle uh, environment is happening or not that should not happen so the moment the uh, crash pulse kinematics as an input given to the um, occupant the occupant uh, uh, impact on a sidewall 
or the roof or uh, the steering column that should not happen that's where the airbag uh, another restraint system that is there that has to act in uh, beforehand of the impact of uh, head of the occupant on a steering uh, so the when i say restraint the restraint for driver restraint for other occupants kids so there are many uh, <coughs> scope of understanding of these uh, uh, safety measures are there that all we will go through in our course so that is of third aspect fold of our study and most importantly having these studies should result in design analysis and accident reconstruction design analysis and accident reconstruction so what do you mean by that uh, vehicle crashed on highways are towed to the service centers when you go and see them you see that it cannot be reconstructed but it is not so so the integrity of your vehicle the vehicle can be grouped as vehicle on frames or vehicle uh, integrated body in weight vehicle so you see that the vehicle could be reconstructed um, by replacing those plastically deformed um, components uh, meant for to deform like that so that design analysis accident reconstruction uh, also so based on that one can also find some more with the severity that has gone into those are all an important things for an insurance agencies to uh, provide uh, the necessary uh, support after the uh, accident scenario crashes happens at the vehicle so these are all something that uh, you know uh, uh, we will be uh, going through in our course and uh, this entire course like um, uh, you see the environment vehicle uh and uh, the human response are the three elements of vehicle dynamics when you say in that uh, the crash oathiness is a subset so it is again uh, been explained uh, through the three important uh, element analysis that's v o r vehicle occupant and restraint analysis <clears throat> right so that is our course so let me share my screen and quickly go through uh our syllabus copy the textbooks uh, what all that uh, materials that i have been going through uh, before to start this uh, course i just uh, give you some kind of uh, you know browsing through uh, on this so this course to learn you have abundant material there is no limitation of uh, uh, knowing having the material you can have your uh, internet you just to uh, put any keywords of this course that you find in your syllabus copy you get plenty of materials of course to have an organized way of learning this course we uh, have two uh, textbooks recommended so we would have those textbooks as guideline of learning and uh, properly <laughs> orienting the acquired knowledge of this course in our mind so that is what is uh, role of me interacting with you to streamlining the required uh, information knowledge and understanding of this course to present to you systematically and make you learn and uh, organize that uh, in your mind to have a flawless thought of this subject so this is what is uh, uh, my commitment uh, that i would ensure that we would have around 30 periods of lectures uh, that would help you to uh get all these uh, whatever that i have uh, told right so um, let me just share my screen and uh, we'll see i have opened many of this thing so give me a minute so hope you are able to see this uh, uh, screen uh, are you can i get a uh, feedback are you able to see yes sir yeah are you able to have what am i trying to say uh, is that clear to you yes sir yeah thank you yes so uh, look at uh, see i have just have uh, shared this uh, um, uh, screen i have many uh, files opened on this right 
So you see that uh, no, I just when I have accepted to teach this course and uh, also that's uh, out of my interest, I would like to teach this course. I have gone through this curriculum and then understood uh, what are the various content that are in this course. So if you look at uh, this course, uh, MWE 6025 has got two lecture hours per week as it is uh, offered in your uh, special term, summer term to accommodate uh, the required 30 hours of lectures uh, you have been uh, given four hours per week so we are going to meet almost 15 weeks 14 weeks also so that's sufficient enough to uh, have a comprehensive uh, um, presentation or uh, teaching from my side and that is not enough that would excite you to go through and make your own uh, um, knowledge and uh, notes of this course right so this course has got certain uh, course objectives that are listed. You would go through this in your um, um, syllabus copy. Uh, I would also put it in our channel, right? And uh, this is essentially whatever that I've been uh, speaking for the last uh, 15, 20 minutes also. And these objectives are going to definitely decement uh, or give you uh, the course outcome that a student will be able to carry out minimum of these uh, listed five items, right? So we have our uh, syllabus uh, um, catered into eight modules. Uh, the eighth module, of course, is the contemporary issues. What are current uh, uh, scenarios uh, listening from an expertise uh, from the industry? We would uh, try to get some industry expert lecture during this time. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this is organized uh, way or uh, described uh, uh, syllabus uh, uh, which should have our so these all modules uh, wise we should have our um, uh, learning to be uh, uh, appended learning to be stacked right so we would start with introduction to safety and crash routineness uh, crash testings so the details are given and vehicle collision models. So here you see that uh, fundamentals of rigid body mechanics more uh, visited and then pedestrian safety and ergonomics. There are ergonomic aspects that are uh, important and then vehicle safety system. So when we say vehicle safety system that can be uh, passive or active safety systems uh, and those uh, all uh, uh, to study this content as the keywords are given to you. Uh, you would go through and then uh, there are injury mechanisms and uh, injury indexes. Uh, so that also we are going to uh, understand. And finally, there are um, uh, technology that itself is a business for instrumentation uh, industries and those who support automotive industry to carry out this crash routineness. Um, the development of dummies. So there are family of dummies. So we have to put uh, um, uh, different dummies uh, inside a vehicle uh, in order to uh, exactly uh, quantify uh, this vehicle occupant restraint uh, design of your vehicle, right? So these are all the various syllabus content uh, and you see there are different textbooks. So one textbook, Vehicle Crash Routiness and Occupant Protection. And this book is published by American Iron and Steel Institute. This is one of the classical book and you see many of the universities, uh, this course is offered or uh, taking this book as a uh, reference book. Another important book, like uh, you want to gather the information of this, uh, no, uh, like uh, reading uh, nicely, uh, the first textbook is sufficient, but you want to go in more engineering details and equations and uh, you know, uh, whatever that I was telling you, uh, till morning, uh, you see this vehicle crash mechanics by Matthew Home. So this textbook is an another in, fantastic textbook. So these are the two books uh, given to you that would be acting as the guidelines to learn this all content. But you have many more uh, documentation reports and many other textbooks uh, titled uh, this crash worthiness, occupant protection, highway safety restraint development like that many titles are available uh, and these books are freely downloadable from google <laughs> so you can download these books and go through so let me just uh, take you to uh, first book so vehicle crash worthiness and occupant protection by many authors here 
and uh, the editors who has compiled this is uh, priya prasad and uh, jamal uh, belva uh, so this book is sponsored by american iron and steel institute michigan uh, so you take this book as your textbook uh, which is given in your syllabus so you can see there are various contents of this book uh, if you see this cover of this book itself is very nice you can see this so vehicle body uh, and uh, airbag the picture itself is very attractive so you will have this uh, this book is having uh, almost seven chapters and these seven chapters are uh, actually refer to your um, uh, syllabus copies as well so you can see here injury mechanisms all so this book is what uh, everyone to read almost of 400 pages near about 388 pages containing this book which is downloadable from google so you would have this textbook on your hand as we go about learning this course and another textbook is vehicle crash mechanics by matthew hong and uh, you see this uh, here um, you have on the prefers you read you get a crux of this course and the content uh, and you see this all uh, the, the here also there are seven chapters in this book and this all seven chapters are giving you ma more of mathematical treatment and uh, um, uh, very interesting uh, it may appear difficult but uh, you should understand what are those uh, how much best possible that uh, we should try to understand from this so accident reconstruction methodology so this all seven chapter is what you can put it in four groups that i was telling you is study of vehicle crash dynamics application of <coughs> computer aided engineering occupant impact uh, dynamics and design analysis and uh, accident reconstruction uh, so all uh, what is this book is organized uh, with these four aspects <laughs> so this book advantage is you can just go to the any page and uh, you can see uh, no this is of our almost 500 that is 388 and uh, these are 488 pages so these two are our bibles now like you know we would always have these books and refer and accumulate our <coughs> knowledge apart from that uh, there are many literature i just have uh, put in some here and uh, like that you can go through there are uh, many important uh, uh, links uh, if you just to go to google and you just type uh, crash worthiness like crash test or um, uh, no um, a safety system of vehicle like that keywords you type and you look at images and videos you have plenty plenty so you if you sit on that and you excited and you will see that no your time get just uh, carried away and you would <coughs> embed with that so you just keep on looking at that this all can be a kind of motivation to understand this you cannot end and get saturated at that point of uh, no browsing these uh, uh, images available in uh, that are watching those videos of crash testing and so on so those are all an excitation and motivation for you to have organized way to learn this course so that is why we have this course uh, and um, you and me we are interacting right so you see that uh, uh, we have uh, this so national highway uh, traffic safety administration the official website if you go you have uh, many documents i just have downloaded few and open here so that you would uh, uh, know them so see vehicle interior and restraint modeling development of full vehicle finite element model including vehicle interior and occupant restraint system for occupant safety analysis using <coughs> thor dummies so test vehicle occupant restraint dummies those are called right so you have like that uh, many reports available for every aspect so you can just go to uh, the official website of uh, nhtsa uh, and that is also you should frequently look at it so you see other uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, textbooks like that energy management and occupant production so you have uh, some other textbook so if we download all uh, uh, that's not sufficient but you have to uh, accumulate that uh, knowledge and uh, you should not forget it that is why we have uh, a syllabus and uh, uh, properly documenting our um, knowledge as notes and that would help you to retain this
uh, learning, right? And there are interesting pioneer paper in this uh, I've seen, and then this again, development of improved injury criteria for assessment of advanced automotive restraint systems. And uh, this has got every year uh, publication from uh, NHTSA. So you see 99, 99 and 2000 and so on, right? <clears throat> and you see also there is another textbook, Highway Safety uh, Analytics and Modeling. So you have here also good content uh, for you to go through the motivational aspect. For example, this particular slide on this page, if you look at, uh, this one gives you uh, the reason why uh, crash worthiness is very important. So you see that uh, number of fatalities uh, and fatalities for 100, 100 million vehicle miles in the United States between 2013 and 18 is a typo error 2018 and you see that uh, uh, you have um, uh, every year from uh, 13 till this you see this blue color one is the total uh, fatalities per year uh, in numbers it's given and you see this red curve which is declining uh, and that is what is fatality rate and that is uh, uh, quantified uh, per 100 million vehicle miles right so you could see that uh, the rate is uh, 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 nicely improved, it's reduced uh, uh, here. And there are some falls in this uh, fatality uh, uh, per year. Uh, you can see these are the valleys. And that's the reason is because of economic restriction during this period, um, the market scenario of vehicle, the people um, transport uh, are not uh, that as that of uh, non-economic recession periods. So these are all something. So like that, uh, the many many uh, documents that you would see. Uh, so uh, compiling all of them would be uh, like a weekly meeting, few hours, and then sitting together and writing down our own notes would make you have this course comprehended to you. So you can also see this potential. Test procedures for FMVSS number 208. So you also have many other series numbers here. 211, uh, like that for restraint system, you know, individual. If you see uh, seat belt system, there is some uh, standard um, uh, vehicle safety standard, uh, what should be its functioning, all like that. So you have like this uh, materials available again uh, from uh, the official website. And there are many papers. I just have downloaded one paper to understand uh, what is frontal crash, how this finite element analysis is going to helpful for to bring in this scenario. See, this is the real time um, uh, <coughs> test, frontal rigid barrier uh, test or uh, frontal uh, deformable barrier test. So rigid barrier means the vehicle only would get crashed. So this crash means it is uh, understood that uh, one of the colliding element is crushing and the other is not so that's the thumb rule or just that's what is the term crash referred to so uh, entire finite element uh, technology method on uh, the development can uh, simulate uh, exactly what is that is happening with the real time uh, crash test so this uh, advent of uh, computer and uh, uh, numerical uh, techniques has uh, uh, strongly helped uh, the people to uh, develop their products so you can see pole impact so if i if you drive a vehicle and it hits a tree and what would happen so you see uh, plastic deformation of the frontal bumper area but the integrity of your occupant integrity of uh, the cabin is ensured so uh, this, uh, this is one uh, interesting paper that you can just read uh, just gone through there are many more like that, you will categorize some you know, six or, uh, topics also for your J component that we will discuss in a, another class. <clears throat> and then the airbag technology in light passenger vehicles. So like that, you know, you name anything uh, um, um, related to crash worthiness. I just put these are the sample reports. There are plenty, uh, you know, instead of downloading, you can always visit the website and you can read, go through those documents. <clears throat> so these are all uh, various aspects 
so i have also uh, compiled uh, you know, a comprehensive uh, introduction lecture for you and that would be delivered on uh, a to slot today that is this <coughs> i will go through this 18 slides and get a uh, comprehensive idea of this course once again and we'll have a discussion of our j component assessment in the afternoon class and you see this assessment rubrics uh, formally what is that uh, uh, way you are uh, assessed for uh, learning of this course is this are you able to see this uh, slide and sir yes sir yeah uh, yes, see sir. here uh, you are going to have a midterm examination so this semester advantage is you do not have cat on cat two you'll have one exam uh, which is on 23rd july and it's of 60 marks and 30 marks weightage will be taken from there uh, let's try to cover these three modules uh, for your uh, midterm examination and you will have fat exam in august uh, dates are not announced it would be immediately followed by 13th august maybe 16th onwards you uh, know you will get a circular for that but however it is again an individual examination 100 marks maximum you may answer since now it scored tandra may be again 60 marks and 40 marks weightage would be taken that is not it come but uh, i just have put it is as per our um, mass configuration uh, for the course which i have made it already in vtop uh, so you will know based on that only i have been giving this rubric rubrics to you so the syllabus is an entire syllabus of this course so mid term coverage three modules additionally these are uh, four modules and their titles are put here <coughs> and then you have a 30 marks assessment so we had here 40 marks from fat 30 marks from midterm 70 and the remaining 30 marks are digital assignment quizzes so i would uh, um, give 10 marks as digital assignment uh, the last date of our uh, instruction day of this course 11th august is a due date and i wanted you make a lecture note systematically of course i would share my uh, lecture content but that's not sufficient plus self preparation notes of individual and at the end i would also ask you to prepare a 20 minutes uh, video like what you did for vehicle dynamics the learning outcomes and your perspective what all there uh, so that would be of 10 marks digital assignment and we'll have two quizzes quiz 1 and quiz 2 on 14th july and 9th august during class hours uh, maybe of 40 minutes or 30 minutes duration it can be of mcq or writing short uh, answers all uh, how you have listened to my lectures and your understanding comes up right so i'll just ask some few uh, uh, test quiz and that would have uh, again 10 10 marks so you would have this 30 marks that would uh, give you 100 marks for theory component of course we have uh, j component and uh, related to j component let us have a discussion uh, in the afternoon as i go and introduce this course formally in the next class so this is all uh, uh, from my side for this particular uh, starting period and if you have anything to ask me uh, you can please ask otherwise we will end the lecture now so i hope that uh, i had given you a clear cut uh, Uh, orientation of what is this course all about how are you going to <laughs> learn this course and how are i uh, how are you all going to be assessed uh, with this course with the assessment rubrics and what are the uh, two textbooks that are uh, required i have just shown you can download it in case you do not get i can uh, get you those textbooks e copies so with that uh, let me stop today's uh, morning lecture and i'm uh, eager to listen from you and you may say uh, what does that you expect in this course anything that is missed in our discussion now and that would uh, help me further right so uh, any feedback anything uh, any any of you are uh, no you have some expectation uh uh learning this course you uh, know you can give your ideas you can also i am very flexible because uh, this first time uh, this course i am offering so the ultimate aim of this uh, um, uh, semester meeting is to uh, have a, a solid uh, materials of learning this course right so i i would learn more from my students always so uh, you can also throw some suggestions 
So your DA also, I think, sometime no kind of seminar that you give. That's what is the 20 minutes presentation. If time permits, I will listen to you or I will make you the videos and submit it. Right. And uh, for J component, of course, uh, what we followed uh, for a vehicle dynamics course, we will have uh, three reviews. Um, but now it is a small semester, one and a half months, and uh, you would have deadlines uh, every three weeks also. I will put the dates and uh, what all that we will go on doing it. Right. So it is uh, basically preparation of notes is what preparation of uh, no, um, what are the research work that are published. Maybe I, everyone will read some articles and try to comprehend your understanding. Since now the class length is less and uh, we would be able to have more focus of uh, everyone's learning. So that's what I feel uh, would be possible uh, this semester. I can have all uh, you know, my complete attention to all of you. Uh, so you, I require a, a feedback uh, from you and then I will end the lecture. So, so I see Harsha. Then anyhow, we'll meet uh, uh, in um, afternoon lecture. I will uh, stop recording.